Again, you should have this already folded and sliced to perfection. This is worksheet six. It is a yellow sheet that we're looking at today. All right, so today we're talking about slope. Does anybody know what slope is? Yeah. Y equals mx plus b is slope intercept form. And we can find our slope from there. What else do we know about slope? It's how much you go up and over, right? Yeah, it's how quickly our line is increasing or decreasing. So going up or going down. That's what slope is. All right, so first we're going to take a look at four different types of slope or what we call rate of change. Again, how quickly it's changing, how fast or how slow. All right, so that's our first flap. So open up that first flap and you'll see four different pictures there. Oh, how nice. All right, so we have four different scenarios here. The first one, what type of line is this? It has an undefined slope because it's a vertical line. So here we have a vertical line. If it's a vertical line, is that x equals or y equals? Let's investigate and see. All right, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a graph here. Let's insert. All right, let's try each kind. We have x equals, let's go with x equals 3. And let's try y equals 5. All right, if x equals 3, we want to go to where x is 3 on my graph. Go to x equals 3 on my graph. Now, if x is always 3, x is always 3. It doesn't matter what y value I have. x is still going to be 3. So let's just say y is 0, 1, 2. All right. x is always 3. So let's go to the point 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2. If I connect these together, what type of line do I get? What type of line do I get? A vertical line. So my x equals is a vertical line. Remember VUX, V-U-X, we talked about it a few classes ago. Vertical line is X equals. By Y equals, we had H-O-Y, boy, or boy, which is today in Spanish. <laughs> so this is a horizontal line is Y equals. So when it's Y equals, one, two, three, four, five, then that's my horizontal line. Okay. Thank you. All right, so looking at this first one, this is a vertical line. A vertical line, which means that it's x equals some number. And my slope is undefined. So right, slope is undefined, meaning it does not have one. Undefined. All right, but the next line is a horizontal line. And horizontal lines are y equals, remember, h o y. Horizontal lines are y equals some number. And what is my slope for a horizontal line? Zero. Zero, yeah, that's the O in the middle. Slope is zero. Ms. Barbara? Yes. I already, I already know the next two. Okay. What is my slope for the first one? Positive. Very good. My slope for the first one is positive. And after it's negative. So good. I remember this from like two years back. Very good. I'm not, not sure how I got embedded in my head because it's so well. It was just, it was just it's really important. Good. It's great it's embedded in your head. All right, so if it's increasing, Going up to the right, it's like we're climbing up a mountain. It's positive. And then as you're going down, it's negative. It's declining, decreasing. All right, so those are our four types of slope. All right, next up, 
We're going to talk about how we find slope. We just talked about what slope is. Positive, negative, zero, and undefined. Now we're going to talk about how we can find slope from a graph. So that's our next slide. So when we're given that graph, how do we find our slope? All right. So here's my uh, letter for slope. We use N to represent slope. And here's how you can remember it. Think of it as a little guy skiing on Jesus. Yeah. Call yourself a little guy skiing on the end. Little guy skiing on your end, that means slope on the skis. Alright, does anyone know what that little triangle means? This little triangle here, this is called a delta. It's actually a Greek letter. It just means change in y. So you don't have to worry about this notation as much. It means the change in y over change in x. So this is just saying change. We don't use that one as often. But you may also hear us refer to it as rise over run. Rise is how much you go up or down. Run is how much you go left or right. And again, remember that positive slope increases, negative slope decreases. All right, so taking a look at our graph here. When we're given a graph, all we have to do is locate two points on our graph. and see how long it takes to get from one point to the next. So for this first graph here, here's my starting point. I go up one, over one to the right. So my slope for this is up one, my rise is run, is one, and then to the right one. Well, what is one divided by one? One. So my slope is just one for this graph. And you'll see to get to each point, we go up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. M equals one divided by one. Oh. One divided by one. Alright, and is this a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive, so let me make sure my slope is positive here. All right, now my other graph. What type of slope do I have here? Negative. negative. So I know my answer is going to be negative. So let's pick two nice points. Here's one. Uh, another one. Here's the other nice one. All right, how much do I have to go up? One, two, three, four. So I went up four. And how much do I have to go to the left? One, two, three. And any time we go to the left or down, that's negative. But again, you can just look at your slope overall and see that it's a negative slope. So know that my answer must be negative. Can four thirds reduce down? No, so my slope is just negative four thirds. Yes, Krista. Can you go that way? Yeah, so you could go to the left. One, two, three. Just know that left and right is your bottom number. And then up, one, two, three, four. Up and down is your top number. No, no, no. It's, so going left and right is your bottom number. So we still went left, three. So three is still your bottom number. We went up, four. So four is still my top number. We have a negative. And Crystal, you could have also started here and said to the right three and down four, or down four to the right there. All right, other questions so far? Okay, how do we feel so far? How do we feel? I think it's. Yes, Crystal? How do we know if it's negative? When your slope is pointing in the other direction. So anything like this is going to be negative. You can also think of it as if you have to go up and to the left, left is negative. Or if you go to the right and down, down is negative. All right, the next flap. What about when we have ordered pairs given to us? 
What is an order tear? X and Y value, right. So next up is an ordered pair. And an ordered pair is our X and Y value. And in order to find slope from an ordered pair, we actually have to have two of them, two ordered pairs. And you'll see that's our next block here. So this is my equation for slope. Again, think of the guy skiing on the slopes. And this still means change in y, we're changing x. But here we have an actual formula to know this. So this is my slope formula. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. All that's saying is I subtract my y's and then I subtract my x's. We just have to go in the same order. So for number one here, pick one of your points to start with. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to go and start with this one. This is my x1 and my y1, because it's my first point. That one means my first point. My first x and my first y. All right, and then this is my second point. So x2, y2. Again, this just means my second x, my second y. All right, what do you think we're going to do with these values? Yeah, just put them into our formula, put them into our equation. Alright, my formula says that slope is my second y value, which is 5, minus my first y value. My first y value was 0. Divided by my second x value, so if this is my second value, I'm going to start with that, 4, minus my first x value, my first x value was 0. Alright, what's 5 minus 0? Uh, and what's 4 minus 0? 4. So did it reduce at all? No. So here's my slope. Five, oops, did you have a question? Um, so for the change, yeah, this change in y represents the difference of the two values. So this actually means subtracting the difference of y2 minus y1. And again, if you would have chosen this to be your y1, your x1, that's fine. You would have gotten the same answer. You would have had to simplify some more there. All right, questions on number one. Okay, let's take a look at number two. All right, they gave us ordered pairs, but it's presented to us differently. Taking a look at my first piece here. Let me zoom in on this for you. y value. Which one is my x value? Four. Four. Yeah, what's inside is my x value. So then what's my y value? One. Right, one. All right, so I have the ordered pair. Four, one. And then what's my ordered pair for this guy? Good, six and negative one. Any questions so far? No. Okay. So let's do my slope formula. I'm going to pick this to be my first point and this to be my second point. So again, y2, the second y value, is negative 1, minus my first y value, which is 1, divided by my second x value, and if this was my second point, I need to start with that. So 6 minus my first x value, minus 4. Okay, right, what's negative 1 minus 1? Negative 2. And what's 6 minus 4? 2. And what's negative 2 divided by 2? Negative 1. And negative 1. 
my slope is negative 1 for this. If my slope is negative, what is that going to look like with my graph? Go and show me with your arms what that's going to look like. Like this, like this. Show me what a negative slope is going to look like. Good, it's going to be like this. Remember that negative slope declines, decreases as you get there. Question, okay, questions on that? Are you still feeling alright with this so far? Yeah. Okay, am I going too slow for you? No. <laughs> alright, so we've done from a graph, from an ordered pair, now we're going to take a look at from an equation. And these are actually aren't too bad. Raise your hand if you've seen y equals mx plus b before. Raise your hand if you've seen this before. Okay, so this is what we call slope-intercept form. And this is a very common thing. You'll use it again in geometry. You'll use it again in algebra, too. If you choose to take pre-calc, you'll take, use it again in pre-calc. Alright, so we have y equals mx plus b. The m which is the number in front of my x value, that is my slope. And, and b is my y. Yeah, and b is my y-intercept. This is where it crosses your x-axis. Zero, b. That's where it crosses your x-axis. So for number one here, what is my slope? Yeah, two-thirds. Slope is that number right in front of my x, so my slope is two-thirds. What's my y-intercept? Five. Positive five here. We write that as an ordered pair. Always write your y-intercept as an ordered pair. Zero, five. Five is my y-value. Okay. All right, how about number two? Yeah, my slope is negative 1, and my y-intercept is positive 4. All right, now they start to get tricky with number 3 and 4. All right, we have to have it in this form of y equals. That's why we did the warm-up problem where we had to get in y equals because it's needed for today. So I need to get y by itself. What's going to be my first step for number three? Get rid of the x. How do I get rid of my x for you? Mm -hmm. Right, we're going to add x to both sides. Negative x plus x. Right, it comes out, that's zero. So I have 4y equals x plus 12. Remember how we told you we want you to practice starting, start writing the x first? This is why. We want you to write x first because that tells you your slope. Okay, we need to get y by itself. What's my last step? Divide by 4. Alright, we have to do i heart division. Oh, I did that wrong heart. That's not 4 divided by 4 reduces down to just y. What about 1x divided by 4? What does that do? And 1x divided by 4. Yeah, it just stays as a fraction, right? We can't reduce it anymore, so it's still just 1 fourth x. If you put 1 divided by 4 in your calculator, you'll find it says just 1 fourth. All right, what about 12 divided by 4? Okay. Okay, so here's my new equation. This guy. There's my new equation. So now let's find my slope and my y-intercept from there. What is my slope for this one? Here's my slope, 1 over 4. So my slope is 1 fourth. 
And what's my y-intercept? Three. Three. So we write this as zero, three. Okay. All right, let's take a look at number four. Sorry, it doesn't seem like there's very much space. All right, my first step for number four is going to subtract 4x. When I subtract 4x, I get negative 2y equals negative 4x plus 6. I subtracted my 4x from both sides. And divide by negative 2. And then divide by negative 2. So those reduce, so I have y equals negative 4 divided by negative 2. Positive 2, good. Positive 2x. And 6 divided by negative 2? 3. Negative 3. All right, so what is my, let me go ahead and highlight that there. All right, what is my slope for this one? 2. Good, the slope is 2. And then what's my y-intercept? 0, negative 3. Right, 0, negative 3. Good. All right, questions on how we find our slope and intercept from our equation? Okay. Our last, our last one. I can find slope of vertical or horizontal lines. Remember, vertical lines, we think of V, U, X, bucks, or hoops. And horizontal lines, we think of H, O, Y, oi, or oi. Vertical lines have an undefined slope, and their equation is x equals. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0, and their equation is y equals. All right, so that's our last thing over here. Vertical lines, bucks, have what type of slopes? Undefined. And remember, vertical lines are in the form x equals. That's why we have bucks. Zero. Horizontal lines have what type of slopes? Zero. 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 And it's in that form y equals. That's why it's h o y. Boy, e u x bucks. All right, so let's take a look at number one. I'm going to rewrite number one down here. Since I kind of got stretched. Okay, so let's say my um, slope for each of these. What is my slope for x equals 3? Well, first of all, is x equals 3? Go ahead and show me with your arm. Is it a horizontal or a vertical line? Go ahead and show me with your arm what it is. Good, it's a vertical line. So what is my slope for x equals 3? Good, slope is undefined. Good. All right, number 2, is that going to be a horizontal or vertical line? Horizontal, good. And what's my slope there? Good, so slope is 0. Or you could say m equals 0. Okay. Questions on that? Okay. All right, so again, with our slope, we have undefined for vertical lines, 0 for horizontal lines, positive and negative. We know how to get this from a graph by just looking at rise over run or change in y over change in x. Our rise, how much we go up or down, is on top. If you go down, it's negative. Run, whether you go left or right, is on the bottom. If you go left, it's negative. We know our formula for finding it with ordered pairs. We subtract our y's on top and subtract our x's on the bottom. We know how to find it for my equation. 2 thirds x plus 5. 2 thirds is my slope. 5 is my y-intercept. Whatever is in front of your x is your slope. And then again, vertical lines have undefined slopes and horizontal lines have zero slopes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a classwork activity. 
to practice this to make sure you guys are understanding. Let me go ahead and pause the video. Let's see.